right, so ladies and gentlemen, friends and family of the arts, I'm very happy to kick off this round table session here live at the Creative World Fair in Frankfurt. I'm sitting here with three gentlemen. Those are the heads of the very famous German artist company and um, we'll go talk about who they are in just a moment. This is the Creative Art Alliance here. And what the Creative Art Alliance is, we'll talk about later. This has been established about 15 years back. But first of all, the purpose of this round table is to get to know the head of all of the companies that are sitting here. So we have Mr. Hermann Meyer of Da Vinci Brushes. We have Mr. Markus Baumgart of Schminke Paints and Jan Wölfle of Hahnemühle. These are the head of those wonderful artists company, been around for century all, and it's a pleasure to have you here. It's very, excited, uh, very exciting to be here because obviously the fair has not happened in three years, so now it's, you're able to talk to people, there's, there's faces, smiles, there's new products, there's excitement in the air, so it's really fantastic to be here. So um, before we just start about you know, asking about the companies, Q and A's, I'd like to introduce yourselves um, so why don't we start with you, Hermann Meyer from Da Vinci Brushes. Well, thank you very much, Danny. My name is Hermann Meyer. Um, I am the CEO of the Da Vinci Künstler Pinsel Fabrik in Nuremberg, Germany. <laughs> uh, that's the real name, yes. Um, I am in this business since 1985, before I studied economics and marketing at the Erlangen Nuremberg University and then Somebody looked for a junior partner out of the art materials industry and I landed there and that's where I still after, yeah, 37, 38 years. Amazing. So um, you basically put there by the good karma or just basically you were in the right industry and you knew what you wanted to do and you're still there, which is a great sign of quality and success also, right? Well, I would say so. And uh, of course, family-wise, my family were bookbinders and stationary oh, wow. background. So it, I was not too far away from the whole smell and atmosphere of it's, art materials. It's basically in your genes. Very <laughs> yes. good to have you here with us. Thank so, you. Next up, I would say I'd like for you to introduce yourself, Mr. Markus Baumgartner from Schminke Paintings. Thank you very much, Annie. Um, yeah, my name is Markus Baumgart. I uh, work for Schminke now for 23 years. Uh, Schminke being a family company, I enjoy that very much. I've been uh, studying business administration and have been with a, with a multinational, with a large multinational, have been uh, in foreign countries, in Spain for a couple of years, Singapore, and, uh, and uh, enjoy that now being in a small entity that is clearly focused uh, to a very nice subject to artist paint and uh, I'm glad to be with you. Yeah, I'm always very confused for me having grown up in the industry of fashion and beauty. It's, you know, the brand called, being called Schminke, but you actually don't produce makeup as of now. <laughs> exactly, and I, I, I don't think we will do okay, so. Unfortunately. Uh, as we stay with the artist paint. Yeah, indeed. Um, there is Schminke, uh, spelled with a CK, uh, named after Hermann Schminke, the founder. Uh, in 1881 and uh, we indeed we get a lot of emails asking them uh, what kind of skin types and for the makeup you have so well sorry sorry we have very nice artist colors but not not makeup and uh, as it's so spelled so similarly yeah I mean as for me I was thinking liquid charcoal sounds like a great eyeliner to me <laughs> <if> you <laughs> ask me <laughs> Anyhow. Well, I, I don't think there is no. a second use, no, you know. No, no, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't dare doing it. Okay, thanks so much for the Pleasure. introduction. And last but not least, Mr. Jan Wölfle, CEO of Hahnemühle Papers. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Danny. I'm Jan Wölfle. I'm CEO of Hahnemühle Group since uh, 2018, the end of 2018. And uh, this is actually the second uh, Creative Days, which i am experienced live since. Uh, and in the meantime, we had uh, hybrid fairs. And it's really a pleasure to be here uh, live at Creative Days together with the Schminke and Da Vinci's colleagues and our customers. And Danny, thank you for uh, moderating uh, this uh, session here. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, in, I'm have having a background of printing and, um, and um, did my business administration studies in Germany as well as in America. Spent a couple of years in America and I have the pleasure to lead Heinemühle since about uh, five years now. Looking forward to working with you and experience this Creative Days with you. 
Yeah, I'm also very excited. Thank you so much for being here and for introducing the company and yourselves. Um, perhaps I should introduce myself as well. I've forgotten that part. Danny Bialski, I'm going to be hosting this roundtable and the other sessions throughout the day. And um, you can literally feel the excitement in the air. Everyone's back in person. Um, you know, presenting themselves, the company and the new products. The hybrid events that we have been doing the last few years were fantastic. They were very successful. But we're going to talk about that also the Creative Alliance, which you three companies had formed a while back. We're going to talk about. But now I'd really like to know, I mean, it was difficult past three years, the pandemic worldwide, it was difficult for companies. But what, how was it for you? How did the company go? How, how did your employees react? How did you handle it? Mr. Mai, would you like to start? How did we handle it? A very good question. I will always remember that day in March 2020 when I was standing before all our people on the parking lot outside because you couldn't gather inside mm. and I sent everybody home <laughs> for two weeks not knowing what will happen. And of course the, the biggest concern was to keep that virus and that disease out of the company and at the same time um, the next day already orders mm. came in and nobody was there and people waited for goods. So to keep everything running, to, to, to have everything in place and at the same time the responsibility for the staff, this was, yeah, but not did, so easy. Did, did that famous, now famous word, home office, did that resonate back then? Was it already an option or was it just like, okay, we're going to have a break? I think this came all afterwards. Okay. But um, I mean, of course, you had you had learned about the distance working and you put in other protection, all the things that were recommended. And uh, we were lucky, but this was a little bit of luck, but also strategy. Um, we were always living with a high stock level. Okay. And this high stock level was really, really helping us in these days to, to satisfy our customers and to show that we can really do a good performance also in this difficult times. Okay, so and this was very, very helpful to get us over the first month. So having a high stock was really your sort of way to get through the initial part of that three year um, yes. phase. Okay, interesting. Uh, Mr. Baumgart, how was that for you and your company and the employees? How did you handle the, the beginning or the pandemic? Yeah, exactly. We, we had the same issues like, uh, like Herman. Um, First, we had to people sent home for the responsibility. And then we found out that demand has been growing rapidly because people staying home, they needed to do something. And uh, watching TV and being on the spinning bike was not enough for some of them. So um, we had people home and had a high demand on the other side. And uh, we also felt that the supply chain didn't work as it used to be. Uh, uh, suppliers deliver the products delayed. So all that together, I would say we had a steep learning curve. And uh, in the morning, we didn't know what will happen during the day. And uh, then we worked from home and uh, we felt we had to make sure that the cyber security is working. And all these little things which you would not, not be thinking of. Yeah. And uh, then how can we produce keeping the distance within uh, so so every day we learned something we had we did our mistakes and uh, so that created a steep learning curve and and somehow day by day we managed it and uh, and uh, people supported us very well our staff employees and you you feel there there is a close tie in such a family company and i think that helped yeah, it's amazing that I think, especially for Germany, being digitally a little behind in comparison to other uh, countries around the globe, that did give us a little push and we had to start thinking forward. Mr. Wölfle, Jan, how was it for you and Hahnemühle the last three years? How difficult was it? Yeah, in addition to what Hermann and what Markus said, for us it was uh, even the biggest challenge because we are the oldest company, so we are nearly 500 years <laughs> in history and, 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 and actually so was our our infrastructure to a large extent and we had to really accelerate our infrastructure which we did really quite well and also the um, employees and the workers council also we had a great uh, engagement of the workers council they were becoming flexible like nobody would have thought possible so we were 
engaging and um, collaborating and, and putting flexibilities, flexibilities in place which we never thought would, poss would have been possible. And that was really aw awesome and outstanding. And I would like to thank again uh, to all the employees and the Workers' Council that they really pushed uh, like this and, and worked together with us. And then on top of it, of course, uh, what, at the end of the day, it counts what the customers say and what the customers, how the customers react to us. And we also like what Herman and what Markus said, our customers were really with us along the way and, and were enjoying the time at home and to some extent, and were basically drawing and, and, and becoming creative even yeah. more than before. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, such as every downfall, every tough time uh, the world or countries or companies ex experience gives room for development or for maybe especially creative forward thinking decisions. And I think also something good came or comes out of situations if you have the right people and, you know, and get together and, and and, and do forward-thinking steps. So is there anything particularly, I mean, getting faster digital, changing uh, accordingly to survive? I mean, what was the real positive thing that you took from the pandemic, for example? Is there something that you really say, okay, the pandemic taught us to be boom. Give me like three, four words or a short sentence about that. I think um, a close uh, partnership with our suppliers mm -hmm. is a key issue. Stronger ties. Um, uh, well, the good ties we had mm -hmm. over, over the years that, that we really got supplies, mm -hmm. uh, that we got the raw materials and pigments. And another thing is um, what I found interesting and, uh, and important is that to keep the information flow. Mm -hmm. Um, we had different shifts in production because less people were the distance, we had people at home. So that everyone knows in these uh, challenging times, we don't know how it's heading, what are the rules from government uh, to have everyone together and uh, to manage that and um, to, 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 to keep a good cooperation and stay together. So I think that that was a big issue. And, uh, yeah. So it's really the human ties became stronger due to struggling, right? Somehow it made you stronger in in sense of knowing your strength, knowing what you had to perhaps improve. So that's that's interesting to and, see, really. And, and being flexible, and being as, flexible. as 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 uh, we said earlier, you didn't know in the morning what, what's happening yeah. during the day, and then some, somehow somehow to get things together. Would you like to add something to that? Well, I would say that for me there are two things. Um, which I would say we have learned a lot from. First, the team spirit, team spirit. for the whole company. And we had to, to be not easy for some people when they had to work shifts because they are also mothers which mm -hmm. had to organize within the family and the children and the father and whatever, you know what I mean? And to get this all done, but there was, there was all the feeling that we have to get through this together. And this helped a lot. And, as, as Jan says, we can only say thank you to, to the whole company and to the staff for this. And I think the second thing I, we all learn is that we do not really have to drive for every meeting two hours. Yeah. We can do also Zoom meetings and other meetings and we can yeah. be more sustainable from that way. And it's not always necessary to see each other in person. But of course, it's great to yeah. be here all together yeah. again. That's something else. But yeah. you, I think we all learned that sometimes yeah. a, a, a video call and a video conference does the same thing as spending a whole day in a train or in a car. That's true. And also reduce the C, uh, C, CO2 uh, footprint that way. You know, that's something I've learned that, wow, amazing. How many trips you can really just say, no, we don't need to do that. Let's just you know, talk to each other, look digitally, it's fine, that's how we do it. And that's something I, I think it was quite something good that came out of it. What would you like to add in, in the sense of a positive development that happened out of the very bad situation of the pandemic? The pandemic? Yeah, the, the additional uh, point I would make is uh, we accelerated the uh, digitalization. So we accelerated all of the digital infrastructure to be able to communicate Instagram, YouTube, to have uh, Zoom and Teams meetings in place, uh, wide bandwidth for infrastructure to enable the people work from home if possible. But of course, the production machines you cannot take home. So it was a challenging um, approach with, okay, some people have luxury to be able to work from home if they like it. Initially, people didn't like it. They said, no, my God, I don't want to work from home. I have never done it. And uh, it's disruptive. But at the end, for the administration people, it, it worked out. It became something which was positive. 
Uh, and for the production people, uh, we had to put, of course, uh, 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 strict regimes in terms of hygiene regimes and shifts, like they said. And this uh, breadth of challenges and and opportunities, basically, at the end of the day, was helpful. And now I'm sure you can, they, yeah. they prefer doing home office and being in the company. No, right? it's different. And it, at the beginning, they said, "No, it's no the way. way. I mean, I need to use my own energy and everything. So no way, I don't want to do it." And I'll say, "Hey, I want, don't want to." It's actually quite comfortable yeah. and it's quite yeah. flexible. It's just because humans, I guess, we're like, you know, as habitual animals always, you know, it's good to get us a little shaken up once in a while and change rhythm so yeah. that we remain flexible and also can still keep learning, you know, other ways. So now I know because I uh, was able to work with Hannah Müller during the Creative Art uh, creative Art Alliance Creative Days, was it right? That's pretty much yeah. it. It's a long <laughs> Yeah, I know. I took a long time to <laughs> really like memorize that. Thing, you know, yeah, I know. <laughs> and I, I like the, sh the abbreviation. I'm like the CEA Creative Days. How about that? Because <laughs> um, I was able to host your hybrid events of the last two years due to the creative world not happening. You've been very busy and investing in the hybrid events and then producing a lot of content that you could then serve your customers, the artists, internationally, and that seemed to have worked quite well, so that you've decided, yes, we're back live at the Creative World here in Frankfurt, but we're gonna produce some content anyway. So you're gonna really, you're leaning yourself way out there because you know it's working, because you're like, it's cost intensive, but it's worth it, is it? Is it, is it really, is it working for you? We'll see, so it depends. <laughs> we'll see after the event, but this is a beautiful event here at, uh, in Frankfurt, the Creative Days, it's international, we have a lot of international companies joining. We have actually from our own company 11 languages here. Oh. So 11 uh, different, covering really the whole world we're gonna are gonna here. Hear, we're going to hear some sound bites of all of them and we have customers from all over the place. Yes. And we would like to use the opportunity to create some video, video content, some Instagram uh, content for the folks who could not or don't want to come. Uh, so that's why we want to use the best of both worlds and uh, we, we try to continue that. And we'll see how it works, but we are pretty confident and we got a lot of good feedback that that's what they like to see. And uh, what, we have this big effort here to put all of this in place. It was a lot of work for the marketing team, logistics teams, mm -hmm. and, and that's why we want to have it also on tape, let's say, uh, and, um, and utilize it also down the road. I think it's amazing. I mean, for a company that's almost 500 years of age, yeah? To, to be so forward thinking and to say, we're going to go digital, we're going to create content, because we can serve it all over the globe, even during uh, phases where there's no fair. So we have always, you know, we're feeding our customers, which is great, I think. And I know yesterday you said the last two years were very successful, therefore, which is uh, amazing for a company that's been around so long. Um, and also brand of the century, you don't just get that, you know, title given. You have to earn it, so quite amazing. Um, what would you think? What, 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 how are you going to address your audiences? Are you going to do it the same way? Or what's your method of addressing your audiences? Yes. Um, we, we also invested quite heavily in film studio, mm -hmm. uh, doing reels, the short clips, doing uh, longer videos, also working together in that uh, with Da Vinci and Hahnemühle and uh, uh, a lady from Da Vinci doing a few clips with us and we use Hahnemühle paper, so there's a good cooperation. And I think uh, that, that helps a lot. And uh, we do online trainings, um, which, which as you mentioned, these are methods we would not have thought three years ago uh, that this could happen. So we are demonstrating uh, how to paint, how to draw, how to use the products. So, so that, that gave us a new uh, partnership and a new ideas. And again, as I said earlier, I mean, we are not perfect in that, so uh, we have a steep learning curve. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it, it makes a lot of fun to everyone. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah uh, being to, to, to move ahead, to be creative, and, uh, and to benefit from each other, from the experience. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing how fast the world is changing on a macro, as the human as well, on a micro level. And everyone's jumping right in. I mean, all the big companies, you know, using all the social media channels, I mean, not just you know the big ones but also the smaller ones for younger people and everyone's really into it so that's quite impressive to me as well um how about you what are your methods are you saying how you how do you address your audiences well i mean we have um maybe also learned that sometimes we think we have made the perfect new brush but for a normal consumer it looks like a thousand other brushes 
and to explain better the real difference, to explain why a company or a group of people thinks this is a perfect add to the assortment, you cannot only put it into a shop, you also have to give explanations. And with social media, you have a channel to really bring the, all these bits and pieces, all these details to the consumer and to to show much better what you really thought about mm -hmm. and why all this was coming about and that there is really an advantage if mm -hmm. you decide to take something else or if a product is going into more into your um, kind of thinking as how a product should be. And this is what we have to use and I think this is especially for our products quite helpful um, knowing also that especially I think for paper colors and brushes a channel like Instagram is really good because it makes visible what people can create at home quite easily and only with their hands and a few little things. I know I'm impressed with the multitude of channels there are. I mean there's Instagram, there's Facebook, there's TikTok, there's um, oh you name it you know there's so much and you need and there's a lot of job openings also and a lot of different jobs that we had to first learn oh that's a job that's interesting I mean there's so yeah so many job openings also for the, the you know the new generations to come it's it's interesting and I'm I'm very impressed also with Hannah Müller um, you know being forward thinking being in a company of 500 years almost and which channels are you on do you know which which channels of social media do you all uh, so we play we have um Every, every, everything pretty much. The only one which we haven't really uh, gone after is TikTok yet. Yeah. So we have done an anal analysis. I know, same here. But uh, everything uh, other than that, we have Instagram with more than uh, nearly 100,000 followers. We have Facebook uh, and everything and uh, Twitter as well, which, Twitter. which uh, lower YouTube as well, which I really like. I think we learned a lot during the last uh, uh, two years actually with VU and uh, with, uh, with the studio we used. Uh, to create really high high quality um, YouTube content, video content, short clips. We'll see the product mentions later. Rana Arda, who is herself an influencer with 13,000 followers and, and a so on. And beautiful artist. Very beautiful artist, and, and she will explain later on our new products as well. And and uh, that's that's the beauty of all of this. So you get it. You can uh, proliferate it, and you can really bring it to audiences you have never been able to do so with mm -hmm. these and, type of channels. And personalize it. Really go into details and take your time. I know it's really quite amazing. Nevertheless, let's not talk digital. We're here live at the fair, the excitement's in the air. I mean, you can, you know, everyone's just like, oh my God, it's been so long. And you see friends and, and partners and families. I mean, how are you going to approach? Is there a, a new way of saying, okay, this is new? How are you going to address your customers? Is there a, a way to say, okay, we're going to do it differently this way, or we're we just going to say, hi, that's us. Do you remember us? And this is new. Yeah, well, what do you do? You have to get you your passion <laughs> and you have to, to get your ideas to the people which you haven't seen in person for a few years. So there is of course a special spirit today. There is, as you smell, the, the air or the special yeah? air of the show also. And you are, you are looking forward to seeing a lot of people again and to give them yeah, really the products into the hands which you cannot do digitally, which is for our products also quite important. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know, I know. He got, he got me with a kabuki brush. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> very clever. <laughs> so what are you actually looking for, Mr. Baumgart, today? I mean, this is the first time since three years. There's a lot of friends and people. What are you looking forward to? Well, I think it's uh, two main areas. First, the, the personal touch. Um, we know that digital conferences work. But to see the people, it's something special. And, uh, and so we are looking forward to seeing some of them. But we also are looking forward maybe to meeting new ones. And this is what a fair is about. Yeah. Uh, also, we are in, in, I think, 65 countries. There are artists growing. And uh, I, I see a clustering, for example, in South America. Uh, we had Chile, then we had Peru, then someone from Bolivia. And who might come here? Who might be asking for, for color. So, so that is, uh, that is the, the, the human touch, uh, the personal side. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also, as Herman mentioned, about the products. Yeah. I mean, we work day by day to uh, create new products, to think about our customers, what they, what they might need, what, 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 they are, what they are looking for. And uh, we went very much into, uh, into vegan products 
uh, into products that care for the environment. Mm -hmm. So, and we have some innovations like the liquid charcoal, uh, like a water soluble uh, oil color, which is vegan, environmental friendly. Um, super granulation watercolors and innovation from our lab. So to show these products, Herman said passion. Yeah. I think that that's what it is. So we go into details and uh, with that we want to differentiate uh, also from competitors that we are really focused. So Hanemühle is only doing paper, Da Vinci only brushes, we do only paint. So that brings us together, the three creative, specialists. The creative art alliance. The, the alliance. And, and to show that, that daily thinking, how can we improve the last percent? So, and to communicate that, that's, that's what we are here for. So Jan, what do you look, what are you looking forward to introduce? This is the first day of the art fair being four days, I think in total, right? So what are you looking to introduce? And is there anything your artists, the retailers, the customers are, can await from you? Yeah, we are introducing a couple of new products. Uh, for example, those uh, pretty uh, beautiful and exciting uh, watercolor postcards. So you have um, beautiful oh, wow. um, surfacized and mold made papers, uh, which you can basically paint uh, with the colors and brushes of so Schmick and Da Vinci. Hand painted. It's hand painted. Uh, and wow. then on the other Beautiful. side you, you put uh, your address and you send this you can send this to a family and friends. So you these are boxes in uh, metal boxes with a set of, of those papers is in being introduced. We are so basically a introducing new them this is a new product we're introducing this uh, always with uh, together with artists with famous artists together they, they create ah, a bundle roll and they create cute. their unique uh, special editions. So it's always special editions together with famous artists. So you have an artist here today as well? Exactly. Uh, Ooh, those folks so will uh, introduce those as well. And then in addition, we have, um, we're bringing new formats of the um, cellulose watercolor books. And uh, they have been very successful and uh, the customers have asked us for new formats, different formats, square sizes, this size. So now our product management team has uh, put the, those in place and uh, we're expanding the portfolio with that. Then in addition, it's all about sustainability. We are having um, additional water, um, hemp, agave, and uh, bamboo, as well as sugarcane products, which, uh, which are out of uh, natural fibers and, and will improve the CO2 footprint uh, over time quite a bit. And all of our products are vegan as well since 1965. And, uh, and that's, it's all about, uh, all about that, all about the products at the end of the day. Uh, the artists, who, is, is this a good value proposition to the artists, to the users? And that's uh, what we're trying to, and for sure, we'll implement here and uh, we'll work with them together. Yeah, I'm looking forward also to getting to meet the artists today. Exactly. So, um, yeah, so new product launches on everybody's sides, which is exciting. Getting in touch with people, with artists, with the end customers, also the retailers getting to see friends again and just um, feeling human, being human and, and getting to together and being, being able to laugh and hug and, and, and vibing. It's, it's fantastic. So if we had a crystal ball sitting here and we could see into the future, what would you like to see for your company, Hammond? Do you have anything that you say, where do you project yourself in the next two, three years? What do you want to get out of this and where you want to go? Where do we want to go? I mean, uh, Jan just said, we have to really um, meet the challenge to make our products more sustainable, to make our production more sustainable, to, to develop new things as raw materials we were used to are not available as they were mm -hmm. before. Okay. Tending more into the, yeah, you can say synthetic vegan area, of course, because this is what the Zeitgeist also wants. Mm -hmm. This is what you have to what you have to be ready for and then um, yeah, invest like we want. We are planning a, an extension of our factory with more solar panel, with geothermy, with things like that. So this is where we want to go. And uh, we can only hope that our customers will follow us and we will create the business that we can also go in this direction. Yeah. We are presenting here new shapes and uh, uh, sizes of our very successful launched line, Collineo, which we had shown last year, which is a Kolinsky Sable synthetic fiber, which is trying very much to imitate the natural ideal mm -hmm. and to 
to be more independent from the natural hair we have used over centuries. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then on the other side, we have a lot of new craft and hobby and school brushes. I cannot put them all here. It's a flyer with eight pages. So wow. you have to come to the booth we'll and see everything. We'll come around and look, yeah. We'll come around and have a look. So how do you see the market evolving and how are you going to serve that evolving market? Um, several areas I would like to touch upon. First is uh, even going beyond the product, is the infrastructure. Um, as Herman mentioned, uh, using solar panels, using uh, alternative ways for the energy. That is a big issue for us. We can uh, create a high proportion of the energy through the solar panels, even in Germany when, <laughs> when the sun is shining. And uh, we, we set up a bicycle program that uh, people can come to work and we have uh, several ideas, uh, especially in recycling of the production, recycling of labels. So, so to be responsible. And uh, this year we introduced uh, for the winter time a four day work week. So we work uh, Monday and Tuesday 10 hours and uh, Wednesday and Thursday 9 hours. Home office for the office on Friday so that we can serve our customers. We think that we can save and win about 20% of the energy oh, without uh, working less. So, so this, this is a way uh, we want to follow. Another path is uh, um, there are uh, traditional segments like oil color, uh, pastel painting, uh, watercolor. Uh, rather newer area is acrylic painting and watercolor is very trendy and as well Hahnemühle with several kinds of paper and Da Vinci with special brushes um, this is really at the heart of our product side uh, Horadam watercolors named after the co-founder Joseph Horadam with Hermann Schminke and that this has created a boom and uh, so many people are doing watercolors today and we feel there are there are so many questions and ideas and Instagram and the watercolor used to be a rather conservative technique doing landscapes. Today it's vibrant. Uh, it's unbelievable how colorful it is and uh, it's super granulating colors and the volcano colors and it has changed to become very modern. So we want to spread also as the alliance mm -hmm. our core segment the watercolor. So that is that is that is path for the next three years. Yeah, we're gonna talk about watercolor as well because that's also yes. your main segment, one of the main segments of Hannah Müller. Would you like to add a few words to the ever-evolving cre creative market? Yes, also on sustainability side of the house, we uh, will continue to innovate on the uh, sustainable fibers. So we have bamboo, sugarcane, hemp, agave out there like cactus as uh, one of the or the only company who has a kind of four sets of. Uh, such sustainable fibers in our products. We're going to continue to drive that uh, innovation vector and we'll look at, for example, uh, fibers uh, out of banana plants, pineapple plants, of uh, residuals of those, and, and see if, if we can use them as, 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 as a sort of super high quality, best of the best of the best quality in, in a combination with, with the linters technologies we have and, and, on, and the fibers uh, to bring that also forward. We can do that because our Production was set up uh, by my predecessor, not by myself, so I, I must give kudos to, the, to my predecessor. It was set up for short run and high quality um, paper manufacturing, and that's, uh, uh, that's the beauty of what we have at our capacity. In, in Dassel, since many years, we have a river running through uh, the company, and with the water we borrow for a little while and give it back to nature. We can create those amazing fibers and, and papers. So basically, that comes uh, really to my last question, which you've already kind of uh, went into a little bit, is yeah, the, the sustainability part, the environmental part. It's a big trend at the moment. I would say it's a big trend because it's so, you know, the, the world is not in a, in a, it's very reactive, you could say, you know, the inter environmental reaction right now of the people demonstrating, etc. Is it a trend? Will it last? I mean, you're saying you're going all forward with the pineapple, agave, the bamboo, and that's sustainable as well. Um, so you don't think it's a trend, it's going to last and you're going to keep going in that direction as well? Yes, for sure, because, uh, because uh, the, um, for example, hemp, hemp is a fast growing plant which grows a lot faster than eucalyptus trees and so on. And so uh, and we're using also linters. So we are, not, we are not really literally using trees for mm -hmm. paper. We're literally using a cotton plant excess, which is linters, which is super higher quality than trees, a lot better quality than trees. And then we're on using on top of the linters, we're using 
bamboo agave and uh, hemp and uh, bam uh, sugar cane, which are also fast growing uh, plants out of the food industry, which, and we're using the leftovers of those. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, coincidentally, or by design and nature, scientifically speaking, the quality is highest with the accommodation versus, versus trees. Mm -hmm. So we're not really, people, there's, a, there's, a, there's a stereotype that uh, paper companies uh, destroy trees. Yeah. We're not doing we that. We don't do that. That's, That's amazing. Right. Yeah, no, always when I print papers, I'm always like, oh, I shouldn't. But if I use Hanamil paper, it's not really that bad. I'm not killing. <laughs> okay. a, a, not killing that many, is it? Sorry. Yeah. And, and it's fast growing. It's a good, a good feeling. Yeah, it's no, a, it's a better good. feeling for sure, because, you know, we've all been now, uh, you know, trained to think that way, which I think is important, because it's one planet, it's, it's us as humans, we shouldn't be appreciating that. So um, you've mentioned also the, the panels, the solar panels, and being environmentally friendly and also keeping thinking in that direction to do good and... Yeah, and absolutely, we are all in the same boat. I mean, I, I cannot say that you are talking about a trend. We all have to do mm -hmm. and we all have to work together to, uh, to, be, to be less a problem for the planet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the product, your company, your factory, however you want to call it. I mean, it's, it's a big word and a small word. You have to really try and it's not possible in big steps. It's, I think it's, it's steps, a mind, step, it's a by mindset. step by step by step yeah. by step. I think it's a mindset that has been created now. Finally, the awareness is there. I believe, you know, how you go about demonstrating for it is a little bit too trendy. That's what I meant by saying it's a trend. I think it's it's important that the mindset of all companies of a big size should think in that way and all humans anyhow. So environmentally friendly, of course, and you're going to keep thinking forward in that direction as well, I guess, right? Absolutely. I, I think that's, that's the way we need to go and uh, we want to go. And, uh, you know, we are all investments we are doing are long term. We are founded in 1881. And luckily, uh, we are a family company and um, we don't have to report quarterly figures. So some of the investments we are doing, um, of course, they have to be economically and we have to calculate well, mm -hmm. but some go a bit beyond that. And uh, that is corporate uh, responsibility. And that is a lot of fun that uh, while calculating, we sometimes can take the luxury to do something which, which, which is good for the, for the global for, for, for the global brands and for things you have to do so that in 10, 20 years, maybe not us, but uh, our successors can sit here and, uh, and um, can look forward well. Very good. So um, thank you so much for giving me and our public, the artists, the, the consumers and the, the friends and family of the Creative Art Alliance being uh, Schminke, Da Vinci and Hahnemühle, a little insights to each company. So this is the first day of the fair. I wish you all the best and have fun and I'm very excited that um, we, we're here, I'm here and um, that the fair is going to go well and that, you know, the companies are going to keep being successful and um, very good to be here. Thank you so much and enjoy the, the fair. All the very best to you and thank you so much for tuning in. This was the roundtable session to introduce the companies of the Creative Art Alliance being Schminke, thank you, Mr. Baumgart, thank you, Mr. Meyer von Da Vinci Brothers, and thank you, Mr. Wolfe from Hannemühle. So that was it. That, I'm Danny Michalski, good to see you, and tune in next time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very thank you. much. Thank you. Bye bye.